Two of Dolphins' OTAs are underway starting Tuesday afternoon, and it's time to talk about what transpired, especially at Mike McDaniel press conference that he hosted before the practice because he shared some notes on Tua Tagovailoa, Devon Achan, Odell Beckham Jr., and I want to run through them. This is Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff, and if you do want more Dolphins coverage in depth, analysis of the OTAs as this is the final week of organized team activities in the offseason. So subscribe to the channel. We'll have updates on practice through the week, winners and losers. And then when mandatory minicamp comes around next week, we will have that covered as well. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is one of the first things Mike McDaniel talked about. And it was Tua Tagovailoa's weight loss. It has been something Pretty big storyline for Miami this offseason, noticed by reporters, noticed by fans, and people are just asking Mike McDaniel and Tua about it. Well, here's what Mike McDaniel had to say. He said that Tua felt he could have the same strength and reshape his body to have a bit more quickness on his feet. It's the natural evolution. And maybe this is a aggressive kind of angle I'm looking at this, but I kind of expect an MVP season from two. It's not just because of the weight loss. Now, sure, does that help? Yes, it will get him more agile, more mobile, allow him to be more twitchy, quick in the pocket, moving left, right, getting his feet set, and obviously scrambling out of the pocket as well. But year three, right, he is already impressed and increased his production in a Dolphins uniform under Mike McDaniel. First year in 2022, only playing 13 games, put up decent year with Mike McDaniel. But then 2023, everybody asked him, the organization, coaching staff, fans, media, said play a full 17 games. Well, Tua did that and had his best season of his career, leading the NFL in passing, completing 69% of his passes. Now, one thing you'd like to see is his touchdown number to go up, his interception number to go down, increase that ratio, but I do expect in year three under Mike McDaniel for Tua to take a leap. It happens across everything in sports. doesn't matter what sport it is, MLB, NBA, NHL, NFL. Like Year three is usually the one because if you come out and you play well or underperform as a true rookie, you get a little bump or maybe you go into that sophomore slump. But then that year three because you're – now officially a veteran. To me, after two seasons in a professional sports league, you are no longer a young guy. You are well-versed in this league and what is taken or what needs to be done to win. So year three under Mike McDaniel in the system, he'll have the cadences down, he'll have the chemistry with his top two wide receivers. You add Odell Beckham Jr. into the fold, and I expect a season for two or where he hangs around 45, 4,600 passing yards but increases the touchdowns and lowers the interceptions. And another reason why people should be excited about what Tua is going to do this season is, well, Mike McDaniel commented on Tua's arm strength increasing. Joe Shad here had the note that Mike McDaniel said Tua Tagovailoa has shown some more force on passes he's trying to drive. McDaniel told the local media. He also has mentioned that Tua working with a new personal coach, John Beck, that McDaniel does have a familiarity with. That's also pretty intriguing if you're asking me, but... This is the part that I want to really address here because you need to look out, folks. If Tua, Tua is adding mobility while also increasing arm strength, you might have to just extend him right now. And that might be the right move anyway. But some people are saying, well, what if you wait a year? Make sure he plays another fully healthy season. You still have the franchise tag that you can use next year and then get an extension done then. Well, it's going to come at a more hefty price if you wait and he balls out a year. So you might want to get the extension done now because if that arm is improving in strength and velocity and deep passing ability, while also Tua adding more mobility inside the pocket, evading pass rushers, scrambling a little bit more as well, while not taking hits, getting down, and not getting hurt, this could be an MVP caliber season for Tua Tagovailoa where he finally leads the Dolphins to an AFC East crown and they potentially get past the first round of the NFL playoffs. So be honest with me. Does Tua have a chance to win NFL MVP? Type Y for yes or type N for no. It is the most pressing question on today's show.
Before we do move on to Devon Achan, I do want to say that Tua was at OTAs today because obviously if that wasn't made clear with the earlier portion, there was speculation that Tua might hold out because of him seeking a new contract extension this offseason. We had that report from Jonathan Jones of CBS Sports. He has been there two out of the three days in the first week. He was here in the first day of week two, so that makes three practices out of four. If there was any questions about Tua holding out, looking for a new contract, that is not the case. All right, let's get to the second year running back now, Devon Achan, because Mike McDaniel provided a pretty positive outlook for Achan entering year two. Obviously, he was drafted in the third round out of Texas A&M in 2023 and had a very, very productive 2023 season for Miami before getting hurt. McDaniel said the more that he understands the offense, and the more that he can get the ball, I know he feels there's more opportunity. Whether that's pass routes or run schemes, that's what this offseason really provided for him. And HN had one heck of a rookie season. He totaled 800 yards, and he was able to do it in a multitude of ways. He had eight rushing touchdowns to go alongside those 800 yards, but also tallied 197 receiving yards to go along with three receiving touchdowns. He was a threat, a dual threat, if you will, out of the backfield for Miami prior to getting injured. Like he was on pace to go over a thousand yards pretty easily. And the Dolphins would have had two running backs to have over a thousand rushing yards if he was able to stay healthy because obviously Raheem Mostert did that. And the part that I'm the most excited for, at least with Devon Achan in this season, is his growth in that passing game. He does need to improve, I think, in the pass protection but in terms of getting him the ball in the slot potentially or out of the backfield on design passing plays, that's where I think he can really take the leap. He's got burning speed. So if you get him matched up with a linebacker on wheel routes, on little whip routes from the slot, like he can absolutely dominate and add another layer to this Dolphins offense that has already been amongst the top in the NFL. And that is why this Dolphins room is so fascinating to me you have so much versatility in this group. You have Raheem Mostert, who ran for 18 touchdowns last year and had over 1,000 yards. You have the second-year guy in HN that we just showed you his two-way ability. And then you add in the rookie Jalen Wright in the fourth round from Tennessee that you traded a future third-round pick to get because that's how much Mike McDaniel valued Jalen Wright's potential addition to this Dolphins offense. And now you have the best running back room in the entire National Football League. Wright will be a good pass protector and added threat in the passing game right away for the Dolphins. And then you already have a duo that has proven success on the ground and in the air. Whew, these three running backs are going to be dangerous. They all run sub four fours as well. They're the fastest running back room in the league. I think they're one of the most versatile. And if you go from a pure depth standpoint, the Dolphins have the best running back room in the NFL. Do they have the best running back? No, but when you combine the forces that you're going to see from these three young guys, or at least two young guys in HN and Wright, mixed with the veteran leadership and production of Raheem Mostert, you will have the most productive running back room in the NFL. And make sure you get this Dolphins t-shirt combo. $15 off chatsports.com slash Dolphins combo is how you can get it. That link will be in the description and comments of today's video. I got my shirt combo already in my room. Make sure you do as well so you can represent the Dolphins on Sunday. All right, to round out today's show, let's talk about one of the newest members of the Miami Dolphins, and Odell Beckham Jr., the veteran wide receiver who was signed just a week after the NFL draft. Mike McDaniel had some pretty positive remarks on the veteran wide receiver. He said that you learn over time the different ways defenses will try to attack you and whether they can be vulnerable. I think having as many players in the pass game to distribute the ball to take us to another level. And... I kind of agree with our head coach, Mike McDaniel. I just don't know how you defend the Dolphins' offense. I really don't. And the added layers of weaponry that you have with Odell Beckham Jr., you, we just talked about Jalen Wright. And then I also really like the rookie Malik Washington out of Virginia. I mean, I've talked about him in depth quite a bit. 
He's an absolute weapon from the slot, man. You have the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. You have the best wide receiver trio in the NFL. And now you add in some extra pieces on the outside of those guys, like Malik Washington, Braxton Berrios, maybe a River Craycraft, or Eric Azukama. Like, Taj Washington had a good day at OTAs today as well. Like, you are now talking about a weaponry in offense. This arsenal is just yet to be seen, man. And here's the big thing, right? And it's hard to project how these guys will play together and how they will perform on the field on Sundays when it's still May. But I'm willing to say this. If the Miami Dolphins are able to stay healthy and the offensive line stays relatively healthy, you get the top three wide receivers all playing 15 games a season. You get the running backs playing at least 14, 15 games a season. This will be the number one offense in the entire National Football League. And what else can you ask for when you tie in to a tug of Aloha at quarterback? Because he's just a distributor. I like to compare quarterbacks to point guards. And I think Tua is very similar to Chris Paul. If you look at the NBA, right, you make that comparison. Nothing flashy, but just as accurate. Knows where to go with the football and is on time with it. Tua has a lot of weapons to distribute the ball to. When you're adding Odo Beckham Jr., you're adding these running backs, this offense will be the best offense in football, and I expect fireworks every single Sunday, lighting it up for at least 24, 25 points a game. That would be a, honestly, low-end number for Miami if they could. I would expect, honestly, 28 points a game from the Dolphins. But how would you rate the Dolphins' offense? Give me a little scale of 1 to 10. We're going back to school, if you will. Drop a number for me. I want to see no rookie scores either. Go to the decimal range. Don't be afraid to give me your number down below. I'll grade it at a 9.2. And yes, that is quite high. I, I did just say I think they are the number one offense in the NFL. The only reason why it's not higher than a 9.2 is, well, because there's still that massive question at right guard. And there's a little bit of a question at left guard as well with Isaiah Wynn, but you have a decent center in Aaron Brewer, right tackle Austin Jackson, left tackle Teron Armstead, a couple of decent swing tackles in Patrick Paul and Kendall Lamb. So if you're able to fill out that right guard spot and sure up that interior offensive line, this offense is going to be absolutely chill. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're going to have you covered on a daily basis surrounding the Miami Dolphins. I'm Nick Roloff. I'll see you on the next video. Go, Finn.